explain an important point that I think is being made. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> when I prayed with this gospel in preparation for today, what stood out to me was if you knew, if you knew the gift of God, Jesus says to the woman from Samaria, if you knew the gift of God. And in our second reading, it was written, Yet though we were sinners, Christ still died for us. Here in this parish of Stella Maris, you know, and you've heard me say this many times, our vision statement, what we desire to be, is to be a beacon of faith, hope, and love. A beacon. A beacon radiates outwards. What do we radiate outwards? Faith, hope, and love. Now these can all sound pretty abstract because how do we do that? What's the, what's the how of achieving that what, I guess? Or the what to achieve the how, whatever. You know what I mean. At any rate, in achieving this vision, there are certain values that we have that we hold to in working and striving toward that vision. One of those that is percolating right now around your pastoral council as we develop a three-year pastoral plan that we have to submit to the archdiocese in a few months. One of those is seek the whole person. Seek the whole person. So let's now visit the gospel that we just, that we just heard. A woman from Samaria. This woman from Samaria, first off, is Samaritan. They were despised by the Jews. A self-respecting Jew wouldn't even walk through Samaria. So Jesus did this. Jesus also, in that cultural context, um, a man wouldn't typically speak to a woman he didn't know. And the other thing to keep in mind of the cultural context, and indeed in some societies still today, women go out to the community watering hole, typically early in the morning, because who wants to be lugging that kind of weight in the heat of the day? So most people who are, let's say, insiders, active participants in that community would have gone early in the morning. It is only the outcast who would be there in the heat of the day because either they are unwelcome to be when the rest of the folks are out there collecting water or that they feel so full of shame, they don't want to be there. They don't feel worthy of being there. So, Jesus, here, in speaking to a woman, a Samaritan woman, at a well at noon, Jesus here is breaking down just about every social and moral code that there is. He is speaking to someone who is socially and morally an outcast. Jesus broke through every social norm to speak to us even today. And that social, by breaking down that social norm, this free gift of living waters that Jesus speaks to her, this free gift of grace if it wasn't grace, it wouldn't be called free. It would be called a contract or something. Total free gift of God's grace that he gives her because he seeks the whole person. He seeks the whole person in you. He wants you to know your belovedness. He wants you to see yourself as God sees you, which is beloved. And he did this for you. This is the radical nature of grace and our calling when we surrender to this, when we are healed by this, when we know our true identity through Christ, 
we're called to see others exactly like this, even people who are socially and morally repugnant to us today. So, let me try this. Let's imagine, and it is a good metaphor, the water is grace, and we are this cup. And of course, God gives us grace, and we quite rightly love the metaphor of grace overflows. God keeps giving us grace, and it keeps overflowing. And that is right and good. It should. But you know what? Sometimes in life, we touch spoken into our lives or hurts or pains or our own sins that they cause this identity that we have splinter and to be broken. We break them by, by sin and sometimes believing the lies that are spoken into our lives that we are not worthy of God's grace or whatever. And God's response to this, yet though we were sinners, he died for us. In our brokenness, this is grace. He continues to pour his brokenness into our lives even though we are broken. This is the gospel, and our response to this gospel is exactly what St. Peter said when he encountered Jesus on the Sea of Galilee. Lord, I'm not worthy. This is too great what you're saying. But it's true. You are a beloved child of God, and we are called to proclaim this same grace in the world. We are called to seek true identity of the other. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your grace. Help us to receive it and to respond to it by proclaiming your wondrous name to others. Amen. Amen.